My name is Todd Kerstetter. I'm the professor of clarinet at Kansas State University, and it gives me great pleasure and great pride to discuss the life and legacy of a very influential teacher of mine and a very influential teacher in the entire music world, uh, David Baker, who was professor of jazz studies at Indiana University for quite some time, I think 1966 to 2000 teens at least. David was born in Indianapolis and he attended a segregated high school, Crispus Attucks High School in Indianapolis. He uh, then went on to Indiana University to study music education and he received both his bachelor's and master's degree there. As a musician, he was a trombonist, but unfortunately a car accident in 1953 damaged his jaw badly enough that he really couldn't play trombone at the professional level anymore. And he took up jazz cello, which was quite a thing to hear. He went on in the mid-1960s to join the faculty of IU as the founding professor of the Jazz Studies Department. He was only the school's second African-American music professor, but the area of Jazz Studies was something brand new. Until this point in time, people kind of thought you had to learn jazz by just experiencing it, going to nightclubs, hearing players in person, and learning it that way. And David had developed a very systematic way of learning it, learning which scales went with which chord symbols and developed this very strategic systematic way of learning it. I even uh, like to say that he could teach a domestic animal how to improvise, assuming that animal could could play scales. So uh, I attended Indiana University in the mid-1980s and all my friends told me you have to take David Baker's Basics of Improvisation class and I had done a lot of jazz as an undergraduate on saxophone and on clarinet so I was really keen to check this out. And when I got in his class, I was stunned. David would play the piano in class and he had a student play drums and bass, so we always had a rhythm section. But what was stunning is when you played a solo, he would pretty much memorize every note that you played. And he would play back your solo while comping and he'd say, you know, right here in the fifth measure, you played a sharp six, and eh, it didn't really work. A flat six would have sounded right. And he played your solo back with that change in it and everyone in the class would smile and laugh. But it was just stunning how he could do this. And I loved the class so much I took it twice. Once on clarinet and I took the class again as a saxophone. It's just so I could get David's influence a second time through. David was also very active as a composer and I didn't discover this until I was well along in my career as a clarinetist. He wrote a really fine sonata for clarinet and piano. It's quite difficult, very fun to play, in a style that Gunther Schuller termed third stream, kind of a blend of jazz and classical styles. And the piece we're going to play tonight, I'll let my friend Mike Cheshire discuss in detail. Mike stayed at Indiana a little bit longer than I did, and he will tell you how he came across this piece we're going to play and a little bit more about his experiences with David Baker. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mike Cheshire. I'm the clarinet and saxophone teacher at Luther College in Decorah, Iowa, where I've been for 29 years. Prior to that, I was a doctoral student at Indiana University, where I met Todd Kerstetter, who had come to study for his master's. We both got a kick out of taking David Baker's jazz improvisation course. Todd moved on. I remained to work on my doctoral degree and decided to take a minor in jazz studies, uh, which put me in contact with David Baker quite a lot. In time, I learned that he had written a duo for clarinet and cello, and I asked him about it. He was kind enough to share a very nice manuscript with me of the work, both parts. And I was also fortunate enough to get to play it with a cellist before leaving Indiana University. All other cellists have turned me down. The cello part is fantastically difficult. Uh, Todd and I have collaborated a good bit on clarinet and bass clarinet, and we were looking for more material for our programs, and I suggested to him that perhaps this cello part would make a good bass clarinet part. Uh, Todd had a look at it and uh, used his considerable skills uh, to make a very fine arrangement of the cello part that I think is very true to the original and uh, we've enjoyed playing it. One final note I'd like to add is that David Baker's procedures that he taught 
for shaping lines while improvising have in this work proven to be every bit as good for shaping memorable melodies. And we really hope you enjoy this.